Um, and here we go. We have our two panelists. We have Desteri uh, from Intellizy, and we also have Betty, uh, the Ken Blanchard Companies. All right, you guys, uh, take it from here. Hello. Oh. Oh, there we are. Oh, hi. All right, nice. Hello. Yes. All right, welcome to Integrating XR into L&D. How many of you have seen me and Destry before? Okay, yeah. Nice. Thanks for coming back for the show. Yes. Appreciate it. It's good to have fans. It is good to have fans. <laughs> it is. Um, my name, like she said, my name is Betty Danowitz. I am a solutions architect for Blanchard. You may know, the, know us as the Ken Blanchard Companies, leadership development. Um, I'm also often known as If You Ask Betty. I have a podcast called the If You Ask Betty Podcast and um, often speak under that name. So if you like podcasts and you're interested in learning topics and development topics, check that out. Um, and this guy right here is my ride or die. I'm sorry. I, what's your name again? Yeah, I know. Every time. Ah. So my name is Destry Hildenbrand, and I am an XR solution architect for IntelliZ. So I spend most of my time working with clients and customers, trying to help them find the best possible solution and uh, figuring out for XR. So I've been in learning and development now for about 20 years, and I've uh, spent the last 10 of it doing everything I can to spend more time in this space here in, uh, in XR with augmented and virtual reality. So uh, I've been pretty successful there. Uh, met Betty along the way and uh, we've been uh, kind of doing this sort of thing uh, ever since, helping to kind of evangelize the technology and to be out in different places. This is unique for us because typically we speak at training and development conferences, so we spend a lot of time at the ATDs and the training magazines of the world, the e-learning guilds. Uh, this is our very first AWE, so we're super excited to be Ooh. here. Um, I know I have like way too much energy for a Friday at the end of the day, but this is what we're doing, so ah! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, we've both been doing this for a really long time. I've been in learning for 20 years, and I met Dustry. Actually, it's five years, and we're, it was in San Jose. It was in San Jose. We were at a conference there talking about, funny enough, XR. Look at that. What do you know? <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. Welcome. Um, okay, so here's the plan. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about what's the state of XR and learning today as we see it, as we've been experiencing, experiencing it. What, how did we get there? What was our journey? And, um, and then what's the future? What, what, do we, what do we see happening and how do we make sure that XR continues to be part of learning plans? Um, so starting here with the state of XR. So what are we doing right now with XR and learning? So we could both give you examples from our companies, but we also want to sort of talk about in general what we're seeing in the landscape. So this would be an example of sort of like a current blended learning experience. So it sort of starts with maybe some self-paced. There's a virtual application session in there. They get a chance to practice. They're evaluated. And along the way, they're sharing knowledge with each other, meeting with their manager, doing micro learning. Does this look familiar for those of you in learning? Oh, good. Heads are nodding. If any of you have ever been part of a learning program, there's some situation or some sort of, you know, version of this is probably where you've landed and you've kind of blended a lot of those different modalities together. Yes, and this is sort of where many companies still are, and you'll notice that there's something missing. There's no XR, okay? So what some companies are are trying to do and get to is more of this idea, where there's a blended learning that has AR and VR integrated within the learning components, but then they're also using AR to enhance the communication around it and the marketing around the courses. And so, uh, for example, uh, one thing that we're doing at Blanchard is we're offering, uh, with every course, we're, we're working to offer uh, augmented reality non-credentialed badging. Okay, so at the end of the of our SL2 flagship, you get to scan something that's and, and it pops up and you get to take a selfie and it says, I'm an SL2 boss or something equally fun like that. Um, so that's just one way that we're starting to introduce augmented reality. And one of the things we're doing at IntelliZ, we have an entire video library that we resell to a lot of different customers and it involves so, uh, a lot of soft skill training. And what we're doing right now is we're actually creating virtual reality practice for using conversational AI um, with avatars, you know, fully headset driven. Um, and we're connecting or creating those types of experiences that are just a part of that existing library. So what we're doing is we're trying to normalize all of these types of technologies so that they just fit seamlessly and they integrate with everything that we're doing currently. Mm -hmm. So as Betty said, all of this is sort of this, uh, this is really what we're trying to drive by speaking at a lot of events, working with the clients that we do. We're trying to get everyone to really understand that XR has a place. Mm -hmm. Right now for learning, XR isn't necessarily that, that silver 
silver bullet that's going to solve all your problems. However, it has a unique potential to, to uh, assist in a lot of the training, the learning, the retention, and all of the different things that we're desperately trying to achieve in learning and development. Do silver bullets solve problems? I thought they killed werewolves. That, that's a problem. And it's oh, solved. Good. Okay, yeah, I'm on. I'm on board. Great. Excellent. Um, all right, so tell us a little bit, Destry, because you are a big proponent of folks content repurposing. Talk to us a little bit about that. So one of the things that we found early on is that training and development, and maybe this is wrong, but training and development is flush with cash always. <laughs> no? No? Not so, so, okay, so you guys are with me on that one. Good. Not really very much at all. And it's really tough to find the budget to do a lot of these different things, especially when it starts to come to some of these XR solutions. When we're starting to try to implement augmented reality or virtual reality, finding the funding for that can be a challenge. Challenge. However, what we found and we really tried to encourage along the way is that there are a lot of parts of the organization that can help with this that everyone can sort of work together with. Whether it's sales enablement, whether it's marketing, those are two big pieces of most organizations where they actually have a lot of maybe cash that they want to use to help, you know, fulfill the things that they're trying to accomplish. Working with training and development and kind of, you know, partnering with these different elements of your organization or organizations you're working with, um, you can start to create some of these, you know, co-branded, co-opportunities that involve XR, whether it's virtual or augmented reality. Very cool. So tell us, how did we get where we are? What's, what got us to this point in XR in learning? So right now, what we're seeing is that... Um, Currently, most learning and development professionals did not, in between learning about the four levels of evaluation and, you know, the retention, the learning curve, right, that we have, uh, they didn't spend a lot of time in the coding department or they didn't spend a lot of time in those different spaces. So what we're seeing is we're seeing that a lot of this information here, you can see difficulty from easy to hard and the easier stuff is codeless. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to evangelize a way for existing learning and development teams to take the existing skills they have and transition them over into XR development. Now, that's not always the case, right? When it comes to virtual reality, the price of doing business is going to be you have to have a development team that has a more in-depth background. However, there are a lot of tools for augmented reality and new tools that are coming out, um, like Storyflow by Motive or Copilot by um, Tailspin that are giving our learning and development teams opportunities to actually author their own VR content as well. So you can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner for you, uh, sorry, that took me a little bit, so the bottom left-hand corner for you, right, stage right, um, this is where we're kind of seeing a lot of these different tools. This is where we're kind of landing to start off with as we start to grow internally for all of these different skill sets. So we've got these codeless, uh, drag-and-drop, you know, web-based opportunities that give us web XR in a lot of cases or web AR in a lot of cases that allow, that make it really seamless for those teams to really add in and kind of back to that blended solution, add those augmented reality pieces into there that help kind of um, push us forward in those different training, uh, the different goals that we're trying to meet. And one thing that we know about learning is that anytime we introduce something new, we have to do it low and slow, right? So it's like, we can't walk in and be like, here's this $50,000 virtual reality, go, go do it. And they're going to be like, ah, no. So that's what's nice is this bottom left corner. I had to check it again too, um, is, is definitely a quick and easy way for people to get some augmented reality or virtual reality into their solutions and get people used to the idea of learning that way in their organization. Um, it helps, helps to change that learning culture. And I'm going to use this word one more time real quick, normalize, right? Something in our industry that we don't have necessarily as much of is we have this sort of pie in the sky vision of XR in general. It's like, gosh, that'd be great if only we could do it. If mm. only we could if afford only. it. If if only, right? So one of the things that we've been trying really hard to do and one of the things we're, you know, seeing in the industry is that we're trying to normalize this technology. And one of the ways that we're doing that is we're really kind of hyper-focusing in on the best possible use cases, those home run use cases. Oh, go sports ball. See what I did there? Yeah. All right. So we got um, just those home run use cases that are going to net the best return for their investment on top of maybe making it the easiest for their learners to actually participate in. So um, one of the biggest ones there is uh, the realistic branching scenarios. Um, VR is huge, obviously, as we know here for putting people in dangerous situations without putting them in dangerous situations, right? It's a much easier conversation to have with groups when you're like, hey, so how much did you pay for that workman's comp injury that happened because the person wasn't trained well enough? 
all right, so we can take a quarter of that and we can build you a virtual reality training simulation that's going to help you solve those problems, right? That's the biggest thing. These are, the, these are that sort of hyper-focused use cases that help us solve those learning problems and get the retention and uh, make it so that our learners are actually capable, a, able, and willing to do all of their jobs. So um, I want to talk about the meet and greets really quick. We, we have this one experience that we love to tell people about, and we, and we love it when we hear that they've actually implemented it. But imagine you're starting a new company, and right now, much, many of our workers are hybrid, right? So a lot of times folks are starting their first day remote. Anybody start a job first day remote? Yeah. How did, how did, how did that feel? What emotion would you say? Okay, very disconnected, right? And I'm not really sure who I'm working for. Well, we love the idea of what we call the CEO experience, where you can use augmented reality, they scan a code, and the CEO, six inches tall, pops up out of their desk and welcomes them to the organization. Or if you're a university, maybe it's your mascot that pops up. Or if you're in TLZ, it's that fun little like, light bulb question mark thing. Ooh, the light bulb, he has a name, but I don't remember what it is. Ew, that's, I should know that. You should not have even. Is this told being us recorded? That. No. Ugh. Anyways, uh, so that's one of the really cool ways that, and it's easy. It's an easy access for them to get that in. So, um, anyways, I just want to talk about that because it's super fun. Absolutely, and one other thing too, we've seen a lot more interest in lately is um, soft skills, right? And that's one of the reasons that we're kind of implementing that on our end. But having an avatar that's connected to some sort of conversational AI, right? Whether it's some of the cool stuff that I've seen here already, or just something as simple as maybe like a conversational AI Lex or Siri type of type of situation, but giving them that opportunity to actually practice those things. And it's an actually, and when you're developing for something like that, it's a little bit easier lift too, right? I don't have to create these giant machines that do all these cool things. I can literally just create an avatar, you know, wire up that conversation and, and have them sort of have that conversation as many times as they want uh, inside of there. So those are the types of things that we really try to keep um, sort of really kind of narrow focused inside of there uh, until there's been some buy-in with a client or a customer or just a group, right? Whether it's us trying to get our friends uh, in the industry to, you know, kind of evangelize it as well. Yeah. Well, one example too, I'll, can, I, can I tell them about Sherry? You can tell them about Sherry. That. Okay, so at Blanchard, we have a virtual reality practice experience around building trust. <laughs> and so what you do is you put it in the headset or you, you can do it in, the, in your uh, browser and you will meet Sherry. And Sherry is every bad manager you've ever had. Can I just tell you real quick? Sherry's voice is her voice. Yeah. So every so, time I hear her talk to me now, I'm like, you're the worst manager ever. Ever. Yeah. So, and it's quite surreal when I talk to Sherry and I talk back. But anyways, um, so it's a really great way for people to understand how to build trust, recognize when Sherry has, has broken trust, and then sort of coach her along with the skills she needs to rebuild trust with her team. Um, so a great way to do sort of like that conversation in a safe place so that we're not asking people to go out and have conversations blind with their with their people and they end up you know eroding trust because they don't know what they're doing they get to practice a little bit with sherry okay uh, moving on. So there's a couple other things that we've done to get where we are with XR. And that is we had to think differently about the way that we design. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. But really kind of keeping XR at the, fr at the forefront of our mind so that as we're starting in the very beginning, we're thinking, what could we make even better through augmented reality or virtual reality? We've also had to socialize it like it's our J-O-B. I'm about I'm going to give you just two seconds for that to, yeah, like it's your job, right? Like part of what you do is talking about it. So if you, if we build something, we're showing it off to other people, people that are either in our, in our industry or our friends that are within our industry or people within our organization, we're making sure they see that we've made this so that they get excited about it. So when it's time to roll it out, they become your champions. And keep in mind, we don't, we're not necessarily usually surrounded by uh, this type of group where it's all very normalized in your lives already, right? You're, you're, they're thinking about about it, you're living it, you're practicing it, you're playing with it, right? That's not something that we see all the time. So this actually becomes a very, very big piece almost as big as actually making the sale and building the, the tools and, or building the actual uh, experiences in some cases, right? Being, making sure that everybody gets on board, understands the why and the, you know, the how comes a little bit later, but understanding exactly why this is beneficial, why it makes sense, uh, why we're looking at it and why learning and development needs to dive a little bit further into it. And if anyone's playing Destry Bingo, that was normalized four times. So just one more time and we'll have a bingo. Okay. Bingo. <laughs> normalize, normalize, normalize. <laughs> oh, you 
ruined it. Okay. Um, some other thing is we've had some really great quick wins. I mean, 360 uh, images and video have really helped us to sort of push forward XR in learning because it's it's easy to do, it's quick, and it tends to be inexpensive. It's also really easy to develop for because a lot of those no-code tools have those built-in templates that people can just run in, start using it, mm -hmm. right? Those, those quick successes, especially as a learning and development professional myself, coming from a background of content creation. We've also had a lot of practice generating buy-in. Um, I, I don't know if, if any of you in this room were ever around when you had to sell e-learning to your CLO. There's a couple of heads nodding. Okay, if you think about it, it's. I mean, we're kind of going through that same process, right? Of we ha that was a, a new thing, and they were like, we don't want to pay for that, and now that's the first thing we think of when we're trying to create learning is we can make it in. Storyline, or what's the other one? Captivate. That's the one. Yeah, okay. like we could do that, but but what we've been able to do is really practice generating buy-in, and so we're now getting better and better at that as far as uh, learning goes. Did you have thoughts or feelings around that? I didn't. I think we're good. Move along. Very cool. So what's next, Destry? What is next? So what is for next? XR and learning. Absolutely. So what we're kind of looking at here, as far as what's next in XR and learning, is um, you may have heard me mention it already, but we're trying to normalize using XR Bingo. and everything. And I can't emphasize that enough. It's really hard right now because a lot of um, a lot of what what's being offered out there is like an a la carte piece, right? It's hey, you know what? This is extra. You have to pay more for this. This is it's outside of the normal learning. It's something different. And what we're really trying to do, we're really trying to make it just a part of learning, right? You uh, you have an entire e-learning or you have a learning program that you want uh, our company to create for you, awesome. It's just gonna have augmented reality in it. It's gonna have those augmented reality badging. Uh, you wanna purchase the video library, awesome. It's gonna have virtual reality already there, right? It's not extra. You can buy extra. There's always gonna be opportunities to get more, but, the sooner we start to sort of build that in and make that work so that everyone just goes, oh yeah, why wasn't there augmented reality this time? We've always had that, right? That's where we want to be, especially in, the, especially in the learning and development space. So how can we make just even those, as Betty was mentioning, those quick wins, those little successes where it's just like, oh, hey, I got to scan and I've got to do something more. Yeah. How do we get there though, Destry? What do we need? So we need a change in mindset completely. Um, I know that when we're here, right, when we're, uh, we're all together and we're at AWE, and we're all talking about it, we're all in that same space. But what we're trying to do now is we're trying to make sure that we have brought a lot of people with us to the, on this journey, right? But we're trying to get everybody to change their mindset just a little bit. Think about it as a not what if, as a how to, you know, what's next, where does it fit now, right? Because there's places for all of it, whether it's a small experience that takes two to three minutes or whether it's a full virtual reality reality simulation that we put people in that they spend 10, 15 minutes in, right? There's all kinds of levels and we need to change that mindset on how we think about it. And um, I know, I know it's getting old. I, I, I didn't mean to say normalize this many times. I swear it wasn't like in the script when we started, but we really need to normalize that XR and learning aspect. And it helps to keep us, um, it, it just helps to keep us on the forefront of what's going on. This is amazing technology. These are amazing opportunities. Um, the benefits they, they truly outweigh, you know, a lot of the reservations that, that we have when we're starting to put this stuff together. So it's just a matter of making that just a part of our everyday learning, uh, our learning journeys. And it starts in design. And I don't know uh, how many of you in here are actually in learning, but we know that at the, at the project inception, when you're doing needs analysis and you're starting to think about what is this going to look like, that's when you have to think about things like accessibility. That's when you have to think about things like how we're going to deliver this. And that's when XR has to come in. What we don't want to do is get to the end of a project, getting ready to roll it out and say, oh, you know what we could have done? We could have done this with AR. We could, have, we could have created something in VR. If we have that at the forefront, we start with that thinking at the beginning, it's going to make this much, much easier. Exactly. And we can start to take, uh, as Betty said, those, uh, those goals that we have for the learning outcomes, and we can truly start to uh, pair up the best modality to meet those goals, which maybe it's e-learning, maybe it's face-to-face, -face, or maybe it's an actual hands-on simulation that you need to get into. Agreed. Okay. Questions, comments? Emotional outbursts. Or smart remarks. Smart remarks. It's the end, right? We all got to have something. Ah. And thank you. You guys showed up, you know, for the final session today. So this is awesome. We are thrilled. We had a spread and we have just really exceeded that We've number. knocked it out of the park. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Thanks I really so appreciate it. Yeah. So do we have any questions in the audience? Any questions? Anything? Small, large, medium? Anything you want to discuss? 
Okay. Um, I guess I have a question. Sure. Yes. Um, I guess right now, what is exciting you? I guess in a in this world, like what is it super exciting that you think is coming and you know that you would like to share with people about this new innovation space? AR glasses. Which one? Hands free. Yeah. I just, honestly, we're very just hands free. About that. I think that's one of the biggest things that we're really waiting for. Like as soon as we can get away from holding mobile devices for augmented reality on a regular basis, where it's an affordable and scalable option, um, that's going to be huge, right? As soon as we can get hands free, similar to that last presentation where they had the hollow lens, right, and they can actually walk along and do those things. Unfortunately. Um, for a lot of organizations, a hollow lens isn't scalable, right? We can't buy 30 of them. We don't necessarily have those kind of funds. However, if we can find something that's a little more in the sub, you know, in the 500-ish range, right? We can we can find something along there. Yeah. We can scale that. And as soon as we get people hands-free, um, where we can actually start building those types of hand tracking and, and hands, you know, opportunities, that's going to be, you know, they, you hear this a lot, but that's a game changer in the yes. learning and development yeah. industry. So. We are, and, and I'm also really excited about that, but I don't want us to lose fat lose lose track of the fact that everyone has a mobile device so everyone can experience ar right now if you've been in a in a restaurant since the beginning of the pandemic you know that how to scan a qr code and so that that whole barrier is gone we had that barrier four years ago we don't have that anymore and so it, 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 there's definitely opportunity to get started now but be sort of looking forward to that next thing which is hands-free you know what those qr codes did what they normalized it. <laughs> wow, wow. All right, we have another question. We're here all day. The nine o'clock show is completely different than this. I'm seven. not here all day, but that's fine. <laughs> hey guys, uh, thank you. Awesome presentation. You put so much energy in it. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, this is the best presentation out of three days here. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. literally. Uh, that's that fantastic. was um, yeah, amazing job. So, um, just uh, just for my general understanding, uh, you, you you talk a lot about VR. But uh, most of the experiences, especially on, in, uh, on your company, on your platform, are not VR-based. So, and I, I understand there is a reason for that, right? So, but, uh, and the adoption curve is kind of, will be there some, at some point. So, um, but when do you think we will be at the point when the company, like the, you, you normalize it for, for everyone, mm -hmm. so <laughs> when the company will be ready to buy in. So five, 10 years, or maybe next year. So, and how Apple event on Monday, you, I understand no one knows anything, but mm -hmm. uh, can you speculate on this one? Because uh, the, the, the trajectory, at some point we will be there, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the question is when, and just your personal perspective on this one. My personal perspective is the hardware sets the pace. So we, we like Jasri was just saying, we need things to be more affordable because learning has no money, right? And whenever we pitch something, and, and even if we get sales and marketing involved, it's got to be a good deal. Like we're coupon clippers, right? That's what we are. And so, is that okay that I said that? Absolutely. Okay. It's very Midwest of you. It, <laughs> No doubt. Um, so, so I think the hardware sort of sets the cadence. If we were to guess, I mean, I think four years ago, we said five years and it's been four years, right? So it's kind of hard to, to say. It sort of depends on the hardware. That's my perspective. Absolutely. No, I think you're right on. I think we're pretty close. I really do. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm actually... I'm actually more excited about the meta announcement yesterday than I am about the the um, Apple announcement next week, right? At least from a professional standpoint, from a personal standpoint, I can't wait to see what Apple does, right? Like it's gonna be so cool because that's what they do. They make cool stuff and they make us all go, oh, I don't care how much I'm paying for it. Um, that's exactly what they do. But the meta announcement came out and it, it really kind of changed the opportunities there mm -hmm. for mixed reality. And they were like, hey, it's under $500. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, nobody's gonna say no to me on that, right? Like, that's, that's exactly what it was. And it really is, like Betty said, it's financially driven. Like we need things that can be scaled because I can, you know, I can, I can get people to, to buy in and have me build experiences for them. It's just a matter of, you know, uh, it, we're not at a one-to-one -one for employee to headset at this point, we're not there. However, if we can keep that cost down and the product quality up like yeah, that, right. like that's exactly where we need to be and like betty said too the mobile devices we all have in our pocket we can get started literally yesterday right today we can go home and we can build uh, any kind of very small to larger ar uh, experience and we can have that cast you know have that form out on the web and they don't even have to download an app which apparently is is more cumbersome than i ever remember it being like i see people right. download apps all the time but as soon as i pitch that to a company they're like 
app downloading, that mm -hmm. sounds really hard. You know, so, um, but no, I think that's the biggest thing. I think that we could start at some point right now. So we can, you, all of you can help us start normalizing it. All of your organizations and all of the customers that you have out there. We can all go home and be like, hey, we can start doing AR tomorrow. And you can follow Destry at normalize.com. Normalize.normalize.com. Normalize.normalize.com. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm usually not like this. Any oh, other questions? Exactly. I like this all the time. We have one more question. <laughs> I'm mean, sorry, we'll have time for one more question. Yeah. Yeah, right this way. Oh, um, so if you find Pop us secret. on LinkedIn, Betty Danowitz, Destry Hildenbrand, you can find the spelling in there. I'm more than happy to send you the deck. Yeah. yeah. That was nice and easy. One more quick one. Yeah, one more. We got six seconds, five, four. Oh my gosh. Three. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't run. Don't, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <You> ran. <laughs> Any conversation couldn't be complete today without talking about the impact of upskilling people for uh, yes. AI. So are you seeing a big trend now in, in the last six months? Companies saying maybe we should put a little bit more money to teaching people how to use To, to upskill for AR and VR? Yeah. No, a what, AI. AI. How, how oh, that's I'm impacting the learning and development uh, industry in, in general, right? Uh, so, so just real quick, just for upskilling people and, and kind of including the, the AI component, is that what you're... Yeah. yeah. So I think one of the things that, um, you know, as everybody, right, we're all, we're all frantically using ChatGPT to help us build the best grocery lists and all those workout programs that we're never actually going to do, right? I'm like, I would look so good after I did this for like a year. Um, but one of the things I think that we're trying to do is really kind of uh, get people to start using it, right? Try to get in there, use ChatGPT, ask it, help it. Um, to help us kind of build some of these things. Like when I create conversational AI and intense, I use ChatGPT to help me say, how many different ways could we say uh, good morning? How many different ways can I greet people? How many different ways can I do this topic here, right? Using it in a way that helps us to enable or to, uh, to help us build the content. That's really where we're starting to use it internally for us. Um, I know some of our colleagues are starting to use it to help um, sort of storyboard more accurately or more you know, uh, dramatically and put stuff in there that way mm -hmm. uh, to help build scripts. Um, you can you can always still kind of tell when somebody has done everything in ChatGPT though, yes. right? It's there's just a there's a vibe you get. Uh, we were at a conference not too long ago and they started talking about ChatGPT and they were two sentences in and I looked over and I was like, hey, I think this is from the computer. <laughs> I think this is ChatGPT. And at the end he's like, mic drop. And anyway, but yeah, I think that just trying to start finding ways that you can help uh, that it can help you um, get started. Get started exactly. Yeah. You know, you what are started. some of those little tasks that take you a long time that maybe chat gpt could help or or an ai of some kind could help out yeah honestly that's the only one that we're using right now we're looking at a bunch more um anybody talk to the owl well yeah, holy cool. cow in world I, is that what it was called in world yeah in world is in the world. is the ai company but yeah no um i sent it back home and they were like you spelled owl wrong and i was like stop it anyway but yeah it was a uh, but wool has been amazing yeah um same. I, the only thing I was going to do is tell them that recently Destry sent me an email. He's like, hey, I'm rewriting my bio. What do you think? And the first thing I did was hit reply. I said, did you use ChatGPT to do this whole thing? ChatGPT made me sound amazing. And he was, and he was like... He was like, yeah. And, you know, they did not use the word normalize one time. Not once. Not no. Once. I also had it write me a tragic backstory as a virtual reality learning developer. I'll share that with you at some other one. time. <laughs> you have to post that one. <laughs> it was really sad, but very triumphant at the end. I, I just want to let you all know. Thank you guys so much for coming Thank down you. all the way down to room A at the end of the day. We appreciate you. We'll, be, we'll hang around if you have any more questions. Definitely. Safe, safe travels home. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you guys.